right, good morning, Rock family. Uh, it is good to uh, be looking at you this morning. <laughs> God bless each and every one of you. There's a lot going on in our world, in our country, uh, and even in our state, in our cities. And here's the thing, I, I want to share some ideas with you uh, in this message today that I hope is going to help uh, change your perspective and, and, pu and position you. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of different kinds of people today, but, but position you in one more step closer to having a posture of victory and a posture of faith. So there's a lot of emotions going on. There's a lot of things happening uh, concerning this particular pandemic. And, and so there's some things that I, I believe the Father wants to know, wants you to know this week um, concerning this, and not just this week only, but even but going going forward. Um, one of the things I, I want to say is, as we as we start, I was thinking, okay, God, what is your perspective in all this? Right, you you are our Father, and where are you in this? What are you doing? What are you wanting from us? What are you wanting to give us? What are you wanting to receive from us? What kind of guidance? Do we, do, we, do we receive from you in such a crazy time right now? And one of the first things that he said he wants his people to know is all the way back when he was giving us his son, Matthew chapter 1, and, and, and the angel said this, that when, when uh, he was talking to Mary, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a son, uh, that which is conceived in you is going to be conceived of the Holy Spirit. You're going to call his name Jesus, and it's going to mean God with us. Emmanuel, right? God with us. God with us. And, and as the Father was repeating that to me over and over, so many different scriptures just started coming to mind. And one is how David was talking about, you know, uh, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And here's, here's the, the connection there. That the thing is, right now with this pandemic, that's what's in the news all of the time. And as we're hearing a particular message amplified all the time, it's really easy for our perspective of God to get decreased. Yeah. The Word of God reminds us that we are to magnify God. And as we magnify God, then everything else gets put in a proper perspective. Which means, not just around us, but even internally. Even internally. You remember when Jesus was on the ship with the disciples and the storm was going crazy and Jesus was asleep. And the disciples were panicking about the storm. Jesus stands up. He calms the storm. He, and so he, he rebukes the wind. He rebukes the waves. And then he turns around and he rebukes his disciples. He says, where is your faith? And one of the things we pull away from that particular illustration or that particular story is that Jesus was able to release peace to the storm because the storm had not crept into Jesus. The, the chaos on the outside had crept into and, and created chaos on the inside of the disciples. And so the storm outside created a storm inside with the disciples, but not with Christ. With Christ, he still had peace on the inside. And because he had peace on the inside, he was able to release peace on the outside. He, 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 he was connected to another world. So he had a different perspective. And so the Father is calling his people to remember that he is present. To remember that he is in our midst. And so here's, here's the thing. As, as we do that, how... How do we change this perspective? Now, here's the thing that, that I've been watching happening a lot uh, online and, and things like that. And one of the things that I want us to do is um, if we think about what the Father is doing, and we want to align with what the Father is doing, the one of the things we have to do is also align with, with what the Father is not doing. What is He not doing? The first thing we can see that He is not doing is He people who are afraid. Come on. It's not funny to him. Right? Fear is a very common emotion and it's really easy for us to just throw scriptures and say, oh, don't, don't, don't be afraid. God has to get a spirit for it. Now, here's the deal. If people are afraid, they're afraid. Mm -hmm. And it's not a switch that you can flip on and off. Right? What the Father is not doing is laughing at people who are afraid. There's a lot of panic going on and we're talking about them, you know, buying, whether they're buying toilet paper or all these other kind of things. Here's the deal. Because we can't laugh at them and help them at the same time. Mm. The heart of the Father is compassion for those who are afraid. And as we're seeing all these things happen as people are expressing their fear in a variety of ways, we can't be the ones laughing at them, ridiculing them, criticizing how people are responding to this crisis. That's not the heart of the Father. And we cannot be in a position where we're both criticizing and trying to help them with love at the same time. If we're going to align our hearts with the heart of the Father, it's got to be through 
love. And so we got to take a step back and get to the basics of our of the message of the gospel. The basics of the message of the gospel is that God loves people. He loves people in our ups and in our downs. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, even while we were enemies of God, God made, took the initiative to come towards us. He's always moving towards his people. And so that's the posture of God. That's the heart of God. And so certainly in the midst of a crisis, you got to see he's moving towards people. He's moving towards people. And he's moving towards people who don't know him through the people who do know him. Yeah. And so we can't be talking about both sides of our mouths. So I'm encouraging you as believers, stop with the online jokes. Stop with the online humor. It's not funny to the Father. And, it, and it's conflicting. It's conflicting. Those who are not saved, they know those who are saved. And they're seeing us laugh at them. That's not cool. Okay? That's not cool. It's not the heart of the Father. He wants His church. He wants the body to represent His heart. And He has complete compassion to those who are panicking. He has complete compassion to those who are anxious. He has complete compassion to those who are afraid, to those who know that feel like their world is turning upside down, to those who don't have Jesus and don't have any hope. He has complete compassion towards them. That's what heart is in. And those who are afraid are not just outside the church, right? They're, they're believers uh, buying toilet paper. They're believers panicking. They're believers. They're, they're people in our congregations, in our small groups, in our churches, in our missional communities who are also panicking, who are also afraid. And so we gotta align, make sure if we're gonna align with the Father, what He is doing, we gotta make sure we're not aligned with what He's what He's not doing. So what is He doing? What is it? He's reminding us that He is present. He's reminding us of God with us. And one of the things I think has just been an, an overlooked message because it's, it's kind of isolated to Christmas is the idea of of, of Emmanuel, God with us. Yeah. That is massive. That's not an annual message. That is a daily devotion. <laughs> That's a daily reminder. The whole point of the gospel is that God comes to us and he comes in us through Jesus Christ. And he dwells within us. And so the same way that, that Jesus, uh, you see in John chapter 20, verse 21, after he was raised from the dead and he visits his disciples, he says, as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. Yeah. Okay. So the Father sent Jesus to represent the nature of the Father to those who didn't know him. The Father sent Jesus to reveal the heart of the Father to those who didn't know him, to those who had a wrong opinion of him. And so Jesus is saying, as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. So to his followers, to the children of God, he's saying, it's our responsibility to represent the heart of the Father to those who don't know him. To represent his peace, to represent his comfort, to represent his security. And so one of the things I will say to you is this, that have you ever... Um, have you ever been trying to figure something out and you ask somebody for help? Like it was totally confusing to you. You're asking someone for help and you said, how do you do this? And the first thing out of the mouth is, oh, it's easy. <laughs> right? Does that ever happen to you? Right? Oh, it's easy. All you got to do is, and, and when they say, oh, it's easy, like it shuts you down. It's like, no, it's not easy. I, I don't know how yes. to do it. It's easy if you know how to do it. It's not easy if you don't. So don't tell me it's e if it was easy, I could figure it out on my own. It's not easy, so I'm asking you for help. Here's the deal. For those who are afraid, when you say, well, just choose faith over fear. That's how they feel. It's easy if you've already been walking by faith. It's not easy if you're afraid. Yeah. Faith and fear is not a, flip, a, a switch that you can flip. When people are afraid, that is their condition. Yeah. And if they were, if you're walking by faith before the crisis, then it's easy for you to walk by faith in the crisis. Mm -hmm. If you're walking by fear before the crisis, then that's going to be your response in the crisis. Mm -hmm. So we just can't expect people to just go, oh, that's right, so me. I just need to choose faith over fear. It doesn't happen that way. Well, I, I, I used to be in the military, and in the military, we, we train in a certain way because um, we, when we are, when, when bullets start flying, we need to know exactly what to do. And so we train. We train on how to shoot a weapon. We train on how to how to take cover. We train on how to how to protect ourselves. Because here's the thing: when it, when when bullets start flying, that's the wrong time to say, "Hey, you should learn how to shoot that thing." Mm. Mm -hmm. It's too late. If I don't know before the war, I'm not going to know in the war. Yeah. yeah. On, okay, so so here is the proper, the what I think would be the mo most healthy response, okay, to people who are inside the body of Christ who are afraid. Here's the thing, in in um, 
in uh, Ephesians, Paul talks about how those who are, 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 excuse me, Romans chapter 15, verse 1. He says, those who are strong shall bear the infirmity of those who are weak. Those who are strong shall bear the infirmity of those who are weak. So let's, let's, let's see what this looks like, like practically speaking. Remember when David came on the scene with the whole Goliath situation, right? King Saul and his army, they, they, they were afraid for like 40 days because Goliath was down on the field taunting the army. And even though God had given King Saul and his army vi many victories in the past, those victories did not shape King Saul's view and didn't strengthen his faith where he can say, okay, God has given us victories in the past. He's going to give us victory over Goliath too. That didn't shape King Saul that way. It did shape David though. Mm -hmm. David comes on the scene and he is shaped by the victories that God has given him. So he has faith for Goliath because he's seen God give him victory over the lion that he killed with his hands yeah. and over the bear. And so, so David is shaped by the God who gave him victory, even though Saul had victories too, but he wasn't, his faith wasn't shaped by those. Okay? So what you don't see David do is David doesn't come on the scene and say, Saul, what gives, bro? You've got victories, right? <laughs> Choose faith over fear. Go out there with Goliath and get it done. He doesn't do that. What does he do? Right? David, look, watch this. David fights. Right? He's the man of faith. He fights for the people of God who are fearful. He fights for them. He doesn't try to get them to change it. He fight. He knows he has faith. He fights for them. Let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. So I'm, I'm saying those of us who are mature, those of us who, who our faith has been shaped by the victories that God has given us, let's not criticize those who are fearful. Let, and let's not expect them to turn faith on like it's a switch. Instead, we've got to fight for those who are fearful fearful. I mean, we got to pray for those who are fearful. So we are the ones who are going to intercede. We can't expect folks who don't even pray over their food to be intercessors all of a sudden. <laughs> we are the ones who know God. We're the ones who believe God. We're the ones who know that God is a God of miracles. We're the ones who can pray and storm the gates of heaven on behalf of those who are stumbling right now in the midst of this crisis. So I'm encouraging those of you who, who you, you've been walking with God for a long time. You've seen God move. Your faith is grounded. When this coronavirus thing hit, you're like, this is not going to be that big of a deal. God is in control, right? You take your God is in control faith and you help pray for those who don't believe that God is in control. You take your faith that believes in miracles and you pray for miracles for those who don't believe in the miracles. Wow. Let the strong bear the infirmities of the week. You know that God's given you that lion victory. You know that God's given you that bear victory. Now we're facing a Goliath. And some of the people of God have been standing on the mountain afraid. It's time for you to take the charge and lead ahead in prayer, number one. But also, another thing that we can do is to help people see what God is up to. Help people see what God is up to. And, and here's why. Because when you when we talk about choosing faith over fear, um, and we talk about how it, it, it's not a switch, right? Because faith is based on what you know about God. Yeah. Okay? That's why if a person doesn't know anything about God, they can't choose faith. They can't. Right? Your faith was developed over time. And even over that time, your faith went up and down, up and down, up and down, and you've come to the conclusion that God is faithful. You've come to the conclusion that no matter what, you can always believe what God says. You've come to that conclusion. And in the midst of this crisis, people are not going to just jump right into this whole amazing thing of faith. It's, it's not going to happen. But what they can do is begin to see how this crisis can move them from more fearful to more faithful. Yeah. So they can take steps of faith, but they're going to need our help. How can we help them? How can we help them? I, I'm reminded of this passage in 1 Kings I think it's chapter uh, chapter 17, where um, Elisha was surrounded by, um, uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha was surrounded by the Syrian army, and Elisha's servant was panicking, and he, he all he saw was, this, was this, this enemy that was surrounding them, and Elisha prayed this, and this is the prayer, I'm going to pray for you, and this is the prayer that we need to pray for those who don't know what God is doing. He said, God, open his eyes so that he may see. Yeah. Open his eyes so that he may see. And, and here's why this is so important. 
Uh, many of us have known the, the Proverbs 29, uh, verse 10, verse that says, when there is no vision, the people perish. I like the way that uh, the, the message Bible puts it. It says, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. So if we're going to help people who are fearful to begin making moves toward faith, they've got to learn some things about God. They've got to see what God is doing, but it doesn't come natural for them. They need our help to point out where God is in this crisis. They need our help to point out what God is doing in this crisis so they can see that God really is present. Come on. So they can see what you've always believed. Some of you are going to start believing it in the midst of this crisis. So this is a tremendous opportunity to help those who are fearful begin to make significant steps of faith. I'm just saying, don't expect them to go from zero to 60 with this thing. They've got to start putting it in gear first, and they've got to start moving slowly. And the way that we help them is God open their eyes so that they can see. Open their eyes so they can see. So they can see you moving. So they can see what you're up to. So they can see that even though there is an invisible enemy called this corona, there's also an invisible army called your help. Yeah. We have angels. We've got the presence of God there. So let, let, let's not focus on the invisible enemy when we have an invisible army. Right? Oh, those yeah. of us who have been walking with God for a long time, we know that, that, that invisible army. But those of us who are, who, who are around us, who are afraid and fearful, they don't know about that invis invisible army. you got to talk to them about it. Talk, make God visible to them. Mm -hmm. Point it out to them what he is up to. Now, let me, I'll end with this. Um, the, a couple of things that are happening here in the, in the world around us is that we're starting to see um, what the Father is up to. We have known over the past few decades, we've seen some crazy stuff happening in America where we're like, man, what are we thinking? Like, we've seen some humanity do some crazy, crazy stuff. We've seen people who, um, uh, you know, maybe there, there are crimes that are being committed, and it's like they don't, people don't report them because people don't care anymore, right? But guess what's happening across our nation right now? What is the Father doing right now? You have seen, in the past few weeks, America become more generous than we have been in a very, very long time. Yeah. You've seen strangers show generosity to other strangers. Yeah. There has been an unleashing of generosity, and God has been doing it not just through his own people, but even through other people as well. Yeah. Right? He has been unleashing generosity. He has been raising the level of compassion in our nation. This is what God is up to. Yeah. I was looking at a, a couple of, of stories online, and one, one story says this. Uh, in, in Houston on Monday, a couple came in to dine at Irma's Southwest Restaurant. This is before the, 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 the quarantine about, you know, you can't dine in the, in the restaurant. A, a couple came in to dine in Irma's Southwest Restaurant and walked out having left $1,900 in cash on the table and another $7,500 tip on a credit card Come on. For, the, to, for the restaurant owner. The, the, the $9,400 tip was on a bill for $90. The receipt said, hold the tip to pay your guys over the next few weeks. Wow. Wow. That's what the father's doing. Another one said, when a, when a neighbor in Columbus, Ohio, a 78-year-old neighbor in Columbus, Ohio, began to self-isolate to protect herself from the coronavirus, a nine-year-old Taryn and his sister Calliope, who's six, sat on this 78-year-old's porch in a suit and in a dress and played a classical music concert on their cellos. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's what the father's up to. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's what he's doing. You want to align with what the father's doing? That's, that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. Their, their mom said this. It was one of those moments where you feel like you're a part of something incredible. In a pandemic, <laughs> right? You're part of something incredible. It was also a good way to remember the value of connection, especially at a time like this when everyone feels disconnected. Just to know we were part of something so sweet 
even just for a minute, meant a lot. Things like what, you, what Pastor Brandon was sharing earlier about going out to those who are still in, in homes and, and passing out care bags and supplies and things like that. that. What the Father is doing is letting people know that they're not forgotten. Yeah. What the Father is doing is this. This, this is it. We talk about generosity. We talk about compassion. We talk about these things that are happening. The Bible says this. It's perfect love that casts out fear. Yeah. Perfect love casts out fear. So for those who are afraid in the body and even outside the body, we have to love them. We have to love them. And I'm encouraging you to do a heart check. Get your heart right with the Father. Align with His heart of love for people. And then hear what he's telling you to do in response to this crisis. Align your heart with his. Don't just respond out of emotions. Align your heart with his. So you want to begin with prayer and say, Father, align my heart with your heart. Help me to see what you're doing in this crisis. And then help me reflect you to those around me in the midst of this crisis. In my, with my homes. In my neighbors, online, on video, a FaceTime checking with a neighbor, whatever it is. The Father is going to give us specific guidance to his children about how to reflect his heart and his nature to those who are around us right. in the midst of this crisis. Right. But I can't tell you exactly what you should do. The Father knows you, your situation, your circle, those in proximity. He's going to give you specific guidance. But the thing is, you've got to do it from the right heart. Yeah. And when you position your heart and posture your heart before Him, He will speak so clearly to you. You will hear it so clearly. And it, it's actually going to surprise you. It's going to surprise you. And I encourage you to do this. That when God gives you those instructions and you do those things, put what He does in the comments on His Facebook page. Or even in the comments on your own church's Facebook page. But put, we want to know what He is doing. Yeah. We want to know what He's doing. And what He's doing through through you. Let's align our hearts with the Father and then help us. And so He can help us see what He's doing, to discern what He's doing around us, to discern what He is wanting us to do around us, how He wants to reveal Himself to people around us. And I, I want to I wanna leave you, leave you with this. Um, there's a pastor that talks about how refers to God as like an eagle. He talks about the eagle, uh, as the eagle stirs her nest when it's time for the eaglets to get out of of the nest and the eagle kind of stirs the nest and makes things a little uncomfortable. Right now we're a bit uncomfortable with the eagle still in charge. Right? We might be a little uncomfortable, but the father is still doing some stuff. Right? Let's lean into that discomfort, position ourselves with him, hear him, respond to what he's doing, and, and, and hear his guidance on what we are to do. I'm expecting God to provide for you. I'm expecting what I'll call mailbox miracles. Right? Mailbox miracles. Those are the things that come to you, whether it's literally in your mailbox or any other kind of way. Come on. Big things that come to you that you didn't anticipate, you didn't plan, and you didn't earn. Yeah. It is a miracle of provision. Come on. These are the kind of things a father is going to be doing. And so so when that happens, I want you to tell us about it and do, and, and, and put mailbox miracle. Okay? <laughs> All right. Hashtag mailbox miracle. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's uh, we should just create that. Or not, yeah, there, and there it is, right? Mailbox. I mean, it's anything out of the blue. If it comes straight to your account and you didn't, you know, you didn't earn that money. Mailbox miracle, yeah. right? You could have found some. You found one time. I found a hundred dollar bill in my dryer. I know I didn't put it in there. It was a mailbox <laughs> miracle. I'm telling you what I know. Okay, so we just want to highlight what is God uh -huh. doing in the midst of the crisis. Miracles are going to be abundant in the midst of the crisis. Miracles are going to be abundant. We need to pray for them, expect them, and then tell them so that they can be even be duplicated. Come on. All right? Now, I can go on and on. Those of you who know me, you know that's my thing. I can go on and on, but we won't do that today. Mm -hmm. All right? God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I encourage you to share this video, and, um, and, and, let's, and let's see what God is doing through this crisis. Magnify God, not the virus. Magnify God, not the virus. All right? God bless you, and uh, we'll see you next time.